YouTube, what is good? Welcome back to a brand new tutorial. It's your boy Jacob from Tiny Tapes here, and today we're gonna be breaking down. I'm fresh as hell, bitch. I'm fly as shit. Yo. Now, if you guys want to use the Polaroid effect on your videos, linked in the description below will be my Polaroid pack on the Tiny Tapes website if you guys want to go cop it. But without further ado, let's hop right into the video. Now, to get started on this effect, what you guys are going to want to do is you're going to go to the last frame of where it transitions. So we're going to go down here and we're going to take a screen grab. We're going to export the frame, put a browse, and I'm going to make a new folder here called Tut for tutorial. I'm just going to save it in there. Now, we're going to open up Photoshop. We're going to go over and we're going to open up the Tiny Tapes Polaroid effects pack. Now, you're going to have two options. You're going to have a 1080p option and a 4K option, depending on what your video is and what you're working on i'm gonna go with the 4k one for this all right guys now once it is open you guys will be greeted with a menu like this it's just a quick how to use we're simply gonna turn that off and then turn this off here at the bottom and then we're gonna go with the classic one i believe we're gonna open that up here and once you open it up you're gonna have the polaroid itself and then you're gonna have this thing that's in red the texture behind this and what we're gonna do is we are going to go where we saved that screenshot we're gonna drag and drop that in here we're gonna resize it so it fits inside the polaroid perfectly and then we're gonna crop the edges and then hit Control alt s on our keyboard and we're gonna save it as as a PNG. Now, once it's saved as a PNG, we can open up in our timeline. I'm going to drag and drop that in there from our second monitor. And now this is the part that kind of gets tricky, but once you guys get the hang of it, it's super easy to do. What we're going to do is we're going to go into effects and put transform on, go into effect controls. And what we're going to end up doing is we're going to change the opacity on this clip down. And using the transform position, we are going to set the keyframes at the very beginning for position, scale, rotation. We're going to turn off use composition and shutter angle. And then we're going to set the shutter angle to 50. All right. And now what we're going to do is use Using the position scale and everything here, we are going to zoom in and line up lonely here as best as we can. Just going to make sure it's perfectly zoomed in so you don't see any of the white border. And we're going to drag that down. Now, I think that looks pretty good there. We're going to turn the opacity up. And then next up, we're going to go over four frame and then we are going to scale out. Now in transform, it's going to be a little bit weird doing it. So when you scale out, it's not going to scale up perfectly. It's going to push it into a corner or something just like it's doing here. Just make sure you go back up and fix it. Now, I think that looks good scaled up to there. And then we're going to go over one, two, three. Three more frames and we are going to hit rotation so we're going to rotate it about 45 degrees maybe even a little bit more just like that and then we are going to bring it a little bit to the side and then down just like so and we'll play that through for you guys might have to do a little bit of tweaking but so that's kind of a cool effect as you guys can see it goes from this frame to it being a polaroid and falling off the screen but i think it's going a little bit fast so i'm just going to make sure the first frame is stable and now we can highlight these two and separate it a little bit more i like that maybe even separate these two and there we go. We have a cool effect right there, just like that. And then moving on to the next one, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to go over to the full music video here. Now, I recommend you guys do this for your videos. Um, this is the quickest way to do this possible. So the transition montage that I had at the beginning of the clip, the way we're going to do that is we are going to go on our keyboard. We're going to find a frame that we like in the video. So let's say, for example, we like this one of his chains here. We're going to go on our keyboard and we're going to press Windows key Shift S. And then we are going to click and drag the clip. We're going to go into Photoshop and then we're going to do Control V to paste it and then turn off other layer that we had there we can resize the new one i think that looks pretty cool there and then we're going to cut off the access and then Control alt s export it as a png and then go to the folder where you guys want to save it to and for the montage i do about four to five different polaroids so once you guys are done finding the pictures that you want or the scenes that you want and doing what i just did there turning them into polaroids we can move on to the next step and remember there isn't just one polaroid guys i have 20 different ones here we have the xo the one with tape at the top there's a map textured one letter textured one cloud Classic. This one's my favorite. Classic, dirtier, has a cool vintage look to it. Ripped and torn. If you guys want to go copy, it will be linked in the description below, like I just said. Now, once you guys are done, we're going to drag and drop all of the ones that we cut out for our montage in our timeline. But I have five of them here. We're going to resize them down just like this, just super quickly. Boom. And we're going to drag them down. Now, I want our montage to happen right in between from this clip to this one and then going back to this here. So we'll make a quick in and out right here. All right. Let's have that go from there. Now, starting off with the first one, you want to keep them small and kind of spread out. So I'm I'm going to put this one right here. The second one, changing the scale. We can put that one right there, right about there. And then this one here. I think that just looks nice in the corner right here, just like that. And now once you have them laid out, a way to have them kind of come in on an order is to kind of build like a staircase. Now, what I recommend doing is having a solid staircase going in, but then when you're coming out, don't do the exact same staircase. It's going to look a little bit corny if you do that. So make it quite random. So we'll put this through for you guys. 
That looks cool there. We can even make it go a little bit faster just by moving to the side here and then moving this side over. Now to make it a little bit more unique and to pop a little bit more, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna click on them, go into effects, and we're gonna apply Sapphire Shake. Scroll down here, S underscore shake, put that on the bottom layer. I like to have the frequency at 0.7 and the amplitude at 0.7. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to press Control C on this layer and then Control Alt V on the rest of them that don't have shake. And we're just gonna apply shake onto it. Now going into the next one, we're gonna change the bottom one to 0.8. The top one, change the amplitude to 0.8 and then the frequency to 0.9 and then the amplitude to 0.9, just so they're all not the same frequency and amplitude. If you were to do that, they would all be kind of moving in the same direction, which looks bad. Now that looks good there. And then we have that solid transition there. My boy Brian has the essential sound pack right here. We're gonna open that up. We have camera shutters, fire, glass, blah, 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 a bunch of stuff that I highly recommend. We're gonna go over to camera and shutters. We're gonna drag and drop the camera all in one. And then we're gonna go into paper and we're gonna drag and drop the paper all in one. And now having them all in one, man, it just makes it really, really easy. When you drag it into your timeline, you can kind of just play it through and see what you like. Now, I like that one there. I'm just gonna cut it out like that and then drag it over. Now this is the paper crumble here. I think that's gonna sound nice with the montage at the beginning. We'll throw that on there. Now to add a little bit more sauce guys, what I recommend doing is highlighting all your footage here, all your clips, holding alt and then dragging up. We're gonna highlight them and then nest them into a layer. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna apply our Tiny Tapes Vintage Glow Effect. If you guys haven't used this, man, I highly recommend it. Gives your footage that vintage glow. We're gonna drag and drop that on super easy. And then going into effects and playing with the opacity, you guys can change that to however you like. I like it about 50 for this footage. All right, and then what we're gonna do next to add a little bit more sauce, just the last tiny bit. In our Vintage Film Looks Pack, we're gonna drag the extra grain on, the crop it there, I'm gonna zoom out. Now this is my favorite grain, guys, and you guys can go grab it from the pack. I'll have it linked in the description below. I put it on overlay with the grain and the glow, and without it, has a crazy look to it, guys, especially these scenes here. If you guys enjoyed this video, I recommend checking out our last video alongside a playlist of a bunch of other tutorials I think you guys will mess with. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.